it's not safe to go out when it's like this because I'll just get hypothermic within an hour, I'd imagine. During the summer of 2021, I set off on a backpacking and mountaineering traverse across the entire length of the Alps. Since starting my journey in the Triglav National Park of Slovenia, I'd been hiking and mountaineering for 47 days. In that time, I'd covered over 1,300 kilometres and 100,000 metres of ascent. Try and remember what you were doing six weeks ago. Now try and imagine that every day between now and then was just spent living outside and moving through the mountains alone. Basically, by this point, I was knackered and very smelly. But the mountains had come to feel like home and I didn't want my journey to end. Cooking up some mushroom soup tonight. Some cheese in. And I've got a five star campsite. You can see the Vanoir, sun on the mountains. Beautiful. <laughs> Having arrived in the French Alps, I needed to cross the Vanoir National Park to reach the town of Briançon. From there, I'd follow the French Italian border through the Cairas and Cotian Alps. Along the way, I hoped to climb Monviso, which at over 3,800 metres will be the highest peak of my entire trip. After that, as I approached the Mediterranean coast, the mountains would become increasingly dry and rocky. This would culminate in the wild and rugged Mercantile National Park in France. I had to cross it to finally reach the sea. With autumn setting in, the weather was also going to get colder and wetter. In the Vanoir. National Park in France. Still crisp, cool air. The sun on my face. Oh, it feels amazing. Just loving being in a different place. I like, feel so different here immediately being in France, being in the Vanoir. Big, wide, forested slopes right now, but I can see above them the snowy, glaciated peaks. quite barren like the grazing and the receding glaciers have definitely left the mark on the place and it's a lot of scree up high well i've just come onto the ridge and this is going to be me for the next eight kilometers all the way up to 3400 meters as i made my way across the vanoir i decided to include a climb over the peak of poids de la Sana. but even at a height of 3000 meters Global warming had stripped the area of its glaciers. Oh, well, this is it. Poi de la Sana. Such a beautiful wild place up here. But it's so sad to see the tiny remnants of glacier. Being immersed in the mountains for so long, it definitely made me feel more aware of just how fragile these ecosystems are. And navigating through this world had opened my eyes to the details in the landscape all around me. At the moment, I'm just making my own way through this bit of landscape looking at the terrain and the slope and picking a line this is the south face of the grand cast in front of me so steep so dramatic i walked late into the evening and needed to leave the vanoir the following morning before some bad weather arrived well it's very early in the morning and i'm doing some night nav and setting up early because the weather's going to kick off today and uh, I want to be down in a valley. It's morning now and the sky is just thick with clouds just hanging and dropping down over the summit. It's like a blanket just waiting to burst with rain later. Setting off early that morning meant that I'd missed out on the bad weather that was approaching and instead I could just enjoy watching the clouds change. Just being out here, connected with these places, life feels so um, simple. A rare opportunity to wash my clothes in the town of Medan was very welcome indeed. Yes! <laughs> Never washed my clothes outside a supermarket before. 
Vive la France! Uh... But soon I was setting off again into bad weather. Oh. Miserable day. That's the change, isn't it? Not too much sunshine. <laughs> but even walking in the rain seemed to bring its own kind of beauty. Well, I'm just climbing up out of this valley with Navash to the village down there and Ruby on. And it's an absolutely beautiful forest, especially today. Something about the rain just lazily dripping off everything. The colours, the trees. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's nice because I don't feel in any rush at all. I've got everything I need, I've got water. I'm camping up here somewhere and I've got plenty of time to get up there, but equally I'm no, I don't want to go any further as well. So it's just a great peaceful amble along up this hill. I had a lovely camp that night and even a peaceful stroll in the morning, but then everything changed. Well, I'm just above the lovely town of Briançon and I've got a massive decision it feels like to make right now because um, basically my plan was over the next three days I was going to slowly make my way to the foot of Monteviso but having looked at the weather forecast I've got a really narrow window it's going to be really bad for three days in a row which basically means I'm probably going to try and get to the foot of Monteviso tomorrow night. I didn't have time or the means to sit around and wait for three days of bad weather to pass and so I needed to reach Monteviso and climb it before the storms hit. The main problem with this idea was that I was still three days walk away from the mountain and I'd need to cram those three days into one and a half days. Having crossed the ridges above Briançon, I had to ascend the entire Servriette Valley over a high pass before climbing the entire Kairas Valley over a peak, bouldery terrain, to reach a bivy hut at the foot of Monteviso. The obstacles along the way were numerous and it was a long distance to cover so quickly. Just come all the way up 20 kilometres up this valley on a road. It's clouding up though, that's what concerns me. Uh, there's a storm coming in. An approaching thunderstorm forced me to stop early before I'd even managed to cross the pass at the top of the Servriette Valley on day one. I just hope the ground here doesn't flood because it is a bit of a bloody looking spot and I don't have a floor for my tent. <laughs> Needless to say, I was pretty keen to get out early the next morning. I'm climbing up to a pass 400 meters above me. Got a big day today, 40K, 3000 meters of climb. Heading up somewhere on these rocks. As I reach the top of the high pass, I could see the peak of Monviso poking out through the inversion of clouds below me and I realised just how far away it still was. Next, I quickly climbed the Kairas Valley. 10.30 now in the morning, walking this road up the valley as quick as I can. Oh, it's 12.40, I'm getting somewhere now. I'm going up there, basically. A little traverse climb the peak. Although I was definitely in a hurry, I still couldn't resist an out and back climb up the peak of Monte Granero, which lay along my route. But scrambling to the top would take more time and energy. 20 to two on the last kind of scramble up the last couple hundred meters to Granero. Come from all these boulders. Well, this is just beautiful. I've come way right of the main route, which goes up a scree filled chimney tops just there and I've just been coming up all these slabs it's really good rock and I've left my entire rucksack just down there and I just feel so free to just enjoy the climbing oh man it's a world of cloud and just on the other side from the jagged summit of Granero oh. I could see that the Italian side of the border was completely obscured in cloud I had to descend the peak and then cross the border via a tunnel dug through the mountain during the 1400s. 
The weather in France was a lot better. Italy's just a cloud. Quarter past three. We got another 15k and a bunch of climb. The terrain got much steeper and rockier after this. And by the time I neared the foot of the mountain late in the evening, I was just praying that any rain would hold off until I could make the last bit of climb to reach the bivy hut. I know from the map I'm stood next to Monviso, but it's just this hulk of cloud with tantalising cliffs. I've got just another 400 metre climb. All my stuff, all my sleeping bag is still soaked from last night. And then this happened. Well, I really wasn't expecting this route to become a surprise via Ferrata. If I'd taken the time to plan my route more carefully, I'd have realised that the last bit of climb was actually a via Ferrata, and I definitely would not have chosen to set off on this technical route in the rain when I was tired at the end of a long day. Have to be careful here. Just check out how difficult it looks. Well, so far, it's just been like doing Jack's rake, but more Italian with chains. But yeah, um, I think it's fine. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to make dinner and lie down in my wet sleeping bag and probably not sleep much at all. <sighs> yeah, it got steeper. Hopefully that's done with now. The Via Ferrata left me perched above a chaos of boulders, soaked with rain. And I had to descend through all of that as night fell. I've just come down through all that in less than ideal conditions. <laughs> oh man. Hopefully I'm near the bivy yet now. In a way it's nice to finish with terrain like this because no matter how tired you are, as soon as you get into something like this, it just disappears because you have to concentrate a lot harder. You kind of forget that you're tired. About to get dark. The Biviot's just behind me. I've done 48 kilometres and well over 3,000 metres climb. Today is definitely the biggest day I've done probably ever after a week of really long days already. <laughs> I'm really excited to climb this tomorrow though. After a soggy, sleepless night in a cramped bivy hut, I was up again before dawn the next morning to climb the peak. Here we go, 6am, setting off to climb on Viso. A couple hundred metres up now from the hut. This is the first kind of climby bit. Oh man, this is so cool. It's the silhouettes of the ridge lines. People's torch beams. <laughs> Mostly just following boulders with paint marks really. I think it gets steep up there, but I can see some people up there. Up here next. Come along there, really easy scrambling on them um, ledges. Beautiful version. I climbed the peak in a dreamlike state, with the rising sun rewarding my efforts with amazing views from one of the most prominent mountains in the Alps. Well, this is it, Monviso. Fifty-three days, highest peak so far. I'm just on my way down now. This is one of the trickier down climbs. I'm so knackered. <laughs> so knackered. It's so beautiful up here though. Just um, making my way down from Monviso now, down to this valley on a really rough bouldery path. I just feel exhausted. <laughs> Like, I really enjoyed the climb and it was a beautiful summit, like lovely views and a great moment that I won't forget. But I feel like I can't really process anything at the moment because I just want to get to a position where I feel like I can lie down and relax. And um, that's not going to be until I get down here because I can't stay up here. There's nothing. Like, <laughs> it's like 3,000 metres, bouldery mess. But oh man done so much chuffed with it 
really chuffed with it. That afternoon, I finally reached a hut where I could rest for the evening and begin planning for the days ahead. Well, this is the view from my lovely refuge today. It's Savigliano. Yeah, staying here tonight, having a shower, having dinner here, and I've just been um, sewing up a hole in my shoe. Hoping they'll get me through what's going to be at least 10 days, I think, to get to the sea. So lots of planning to do this evening, um, looking at the map and trying to figure out resupply options and stuff like that. I set off again the following morning. I needed to cross the Chambéron Massif, which was a particularly high and remote area where I had little chance of escaping from any bad weather. Day 55, got a long day today, 30k, 2000 climb. Bringing the sheep down for the autumn, I reckon. Another sign that the season is turning. The marmots are so fat now, <laughs> fattening up for winter. The changing seasons also seem to be bringing more bad weather. These mountains might look beautiful, but lightning strikes are one of the biggest dangers when camping and hiking high above the tree line. Now at 2,500 metres, I've got to get up to 3,000 or a bit over. I don't think the weather's going to stay dry for that long. It just feels a bit ominous, these clouds. Pretty aware of how much the weather can make me anxious and I'm not always sure when I'm just being overcautious. <laughs> Today I'm trying to be bolder and um, not let it put me off. Up to Col de Madonnet. That was a steep climb up to Scree. Let's see what the other side's like. With darkening skies overhead, I forced myself over a series of high passes through the Chambre on Massif. Well, I've just come down those scree slopes at the back there, where that kind of sandy patch is. Really like atmospheric, cliffy, cirque, scree everywhere, cloud whipping up. And now I'm going over there somehow. <laughs> oh man, I'll be pleased when this one's over, I'll tell you that. Yeah, rough terrain. Up we go. Got up that. And now over here to Vivaco Barengi. Yes. Home sweet home. Lovely little place, actually really cosy in here. There's loads of beds in there. It's pretty cool. It's been so many long days in a row and just not really a good um, place to stop really yet. Today again, like I did 38K and nearly 3000 meters of climb. When I arrived in the Bivaco Berengi, it felt like a safe haven, but by the next morning, it had come to feel like a prison. Pretty rough weather this morning, I don't know if you can hear this outside. It's like gale force winds and driving rain. It's not safe to go out when it's like this, because I'll just get hypothermic within an hour, I'd imagine. I mean, I've, the only weather data I've got is like, it's patchy, but it, there's there's nothing to suggest that it's going to get better as the day goes on. Yeah. It's brightening up a bit. Oh man, it's proper windy. I'm just going to try and make a break for it. This is where I am. Really serious, moody place. Ooh, so far so good. Here's the top. I think it's about to get very, very windy. Just dropping down into a valley and I think I'm going to get very wet coming down here. Oh man, really tough day today. I feel it's such a bleak place, mentally and literally. It's gonna stay in that like hut thing behind me. It's absolutely horrible. Full of mice droppings, total mess in there, and there's no clean water here anywhere. So I'm actually gonna head up. Well, I'm happy I found water. And now it's starting to rain. There's some blue sky there. It's about the only blue sky I've seen all 
day. I'm very tired. I'm going to try and go straight to sleep, I think. Um, and hope that condensation doesn't wake me up. Bonsoir. I'd thrown up my tent in a dire need for sleep. So when I heard thunder at 1am, I needed to move fast. So sketchy, stressed. Big storm coming in, which was not in the forecast. So I just moved my tent, like, just chucked everything in my bag and legged it at least over beneath some higher ground. I was on like a little knoll next to a little lake. Felt really exposed, feel slightly less exposed here. Morning, horrible weather continues. And this rain just seems like it's just gonna be steady and constant for a while. Knackered. Well, I don't trust the weather today one little bit, but I can't stay here. If I go down, I end up taking a detour in completely the wrong direction. So I'm having to go up into weather I don't really like. Just like really tough few days this. Okay, we go into the crap. Got a massive task ahead of me now. It's gonna rain and storm a lot all afternoon. So I'm got to go over a pass up there and then I'm dropping way down right into the valley. But then I've got a mission along the road at the bottom of the valley for, I don't know, 20k. <sighs> Too much probably to get to a campsite tonight. By this point, I was really feeling the effects of too many long days, bad weather and sleepless nights. Man, I just feel so exhausted, really strung out. I've wanted to take a rest day for, I don't know, like over a week now, but it's not felt possible. I've not been able to feel as if I can rest or relax because the way the weather and shops and accommodation have not aligned. And it's the same now, like I would love to just come down and just stop somewhere and stay in a place and dry everything out and just relax. The weather is making things really difficult just at a time where I, I needed things to ease up a bit. A desperate 15 kilometer road walk led me down to the village of Isola, but it turned out their campsites didn't stay open that late into the autumn. Well, this is bed tonight. A doorway in a village. Everything was closed. Campsites were shut, no jeep. Snackers, it's been raining a lot. It's nice to be somewhere dry. Nicer than last night when I thought it was going to get struck by lightning. It's a shame, I wish I could turn the light off. That's the only thing about this doorway, it's very lit up. <laughs> Fortunately, I woke from my doorway the next day feeling like a new man. And luckily, the weather forecast had also improved significantly. Before I knew it, I realised. I only had a few days left to get to the end of my walk and I had one last peak to climb along the way. I was now setting off into the Mercantour National Park in France. It's day 58 in the morning and I'm just climbing up out of the village of Isola behind me and this is it. Should only have four or five days left now hopefully. Then my last food resupply hopefully. I've got a massive climb ahead of me back up to two and a half thousand meters. Its close proximity to the Mediterranean Sea makes the Mercantor Park a particularly dry and rocky area of the Alps. But its bouldery landscapes were still adorned with spectacular lakes. What an amazing spot for this Biviat. Looking over the Argentera down this incredible valley. Definitely feels like the trip is winding down so much now, like such a melancholy kind of vibe. What an amazing journey it's been. Big storm just popped up in front of the hut. Ooh, oh, lightning. May, I'm so glad to be in here. 
I awoke the next morning ready to take on the final climbing route of my trip, a scramble up the Monte Argentera. It is first light, this is day 59 now and I'm setting off to try and climb my final peak of this trip, the Argentera which is up there behind me. The problem is I've not got an easy approach because I couldn't go any further yesterday really, I've got to now go down 700 metres into this valley and then up to a pass. It should be like a really good climb with a bit of everything but I've just got to hope that I've got much energy left by the time I get there. Well I'm well on my way up now, I've been going like three and a half hours heading up onto what looks like a horrible scree gully that leads me to a pass. Just want to make the most of this to the last climb so let's do it. <sighs> oh, I made it up to the pass really quickly actually, really, really happy with that. Got good momentum. It's beautiful. I'm sure it'll card up fairly quickly. Oh, there it is up there. Some people up there. So what this route is, is basically a ledge that I'm now on and it goes up and along the southeast face. So yeah, this ledge is just running all the way up. It's proper cool. Little patches of snow here. But this has been lovely so far. It's really good rock, like nearly all of it is super solid. Dead nice, steep of it with some ropes coming up. Sarendi sono perso la prima letta, la di pazienti. Yankee. Yankee. Yankee uniform extra. Buongiorno, grazie per aver risposto. From the rocky summit of the Argentera, it felt like any doubts about making it to the end could finally be forgotten. Well, that's it behind me, that is the ocean. Off in the distance. I didn't think when I set off I'd be able to do all of this. I, I didn't think I'd make it to the end. Not about skipping some in the middle. This has just been crazy. The Argentera, amazing way to finish the climbing. The technical climbing might have been over, but the walking definitely wasn't. So that's the Argentera up there where I've just come down from. I'm going up over Col de Finestra. It's like 500 meter climb. What a place but it is filling up with cloud and I'm very tired. With the peak climbed and the high mountains running out, I strapped in to throw myself over several more high passes, ready for the last few days. I'm gonna try and beast it over this pass into France. It's gonna turn it into a, a massive day. Pray for good weather. Up we go, again. Well, I've got to the top in less than an hour. Oh man, just ran out of that basically. Scrambling around and living in the mountains for weeks on end, the chamois and ibex have been my only company. Hello, mate. I was going to really miss them. Well, just stayed in the hut up there. It's the morning. Here we go, like two, three days left now. It feels so strange to be right near the end of this journey. It feels like the, the world that I know is coming to an end. <laughs> Knowing that very soon I'd wake up without needing to walk across any more mountains made those last days and moments feel even more poignant. Such a beautiful, peaceful autumn morning. I just feel so lucky to be here. What a beautiful place on a beautiful day. And so now I'm stepping down out of the high mountains for the last time into the forested ridge lines and foothills that will take me right down to the ocean tomorrow. All of a sudden the mountains fell away and I knew that I only had one more night left. It's gonna be so strange tomorrow getting to the end of this. For two months now, the rhythm of my days has just been dictated by the landscapes and the weather. And it's always really strange coming out of that. And there we go. Watching the sun set on the mountains for one last time. Oh man, what an amazing spot to sleep. It's like a full moon all night shining off the ocean there's like rutting deer making loads of funny noises in the forest and the owls now the sun's hitting the mountains just don't want it to end <laughs> really don't to be honest 
but um yeah i'm gonna pack down and um do this final day's walk 61 days after leaving slovenia i just had one final descent to make Here we go, let's go down. Down into the world of stuff that isn't mountains. This feels very strange. Soon this rucksack on my back that's had to provide me of everything is about to mean a whole lot less. Suddenly, it's not hard to find water. It's not hard to find electricity food i'll have like other clothes to wear i can like sit down at a table and not walk anywhere for a day uh, what is life 61 days mate 61 bloody days 61 of the best days of my life that is for sure Two months after setting out from the eastern tip of the Alps, I finally staggered into the Mediterranean Sea. I had questionable facial hair and the worst t-shirt tan of my entire life, and I didn't know how to process what had just happened. This is the end of my journey. But seriously, look at this ridiculous tan line. I never thought I'd be able to walk and climb across the entire Alps. <laughs> It's amazing to finish something like this and just know that no matter what happens, this is forever. Like, I'll never ever forget this. It's been so special. During the 61 days since I'd left Slovenia, I'd managed to walk around 1,900 kilometres and cover over 130,000 metres of ascent. I'd also managed to hike, scramble and climb to the top of around 60 extra peaks. This is the crux bit here. As well as the sheer distance, I'd had to overcome thunderstorms. This is the worst situation I've ever been in. Broken gear. My bag's falling apart and I'm very scared. Difficult terrain. Well, sometimes you just look back at what you've come down and just think how and why, but that is what I've just come down. And fatigue. I don't know what's going on, mate. I'm knackered. I don't even know where I'm sleeping because I couldn't see anything when I got here. It was like really late. I'm worried I'm in someone's garden. <laughs> Coffee. What made it all worthwhile looking back was the mountains themselves. These are the moments that I just never, ever will forget. What a trip this has been. What a trip. <laughs> There's not a day that goes by when I don't think back to some memory from my journey. Those moments and those places will stay with me forever and the mountains will always feel like home.